Good afternoon. I think we'll, uh, we'll get started now. Um, my name is Mark Quarterman, and I'm a senior advisor and director of the Post-Conflict Reconstruction Project here at CS, uh, CSIS. And I'd like to welcome you here, you here for an interesting and timely discussion co-hosted by the Center and the U.S. Department of State's Office for the Coordinator of Reconstruction and Stabilization of the diplomatic and security challenges facing the Central African Republic, a country in the heart of Africa that has not always elicited the interest of uh, the rest of the world. This session will start with a brief presentation by Ambassador Robert Loftus, the acting coordinator for reconstruction and stabilization at the State Department, about whom I'll say a few words in a moment, to be followed by a discussion by a distinguished panel. After the presentations, we will open the floor to questions from the audience. Ambassador Loftus, our next speaker and co-host, had a distinguished career in the Foreign Service that included service as U.S. Ambassador to the Kingdom of Lesotho, lead negotiator for the Status of Forces Agreement with Iraq, uh, and State Department Special Representative for Avian and uh, Pandemic Influenza. I speak in the past tense because he proves the rule that no good deed goes unpunished. After these many accomplishments, Ambassador Loftus retired from the Foreign Service in 2009, only to be pulled back very recently as acting coordinator for reconstruction and development because of his experience, knowledge, and wisdom. I am pleased to introduce Ambassador Robert Loftus to make a few introductory remarks. Ambassador. Uh, thanks, Mark. I'm not sure about the wisdom part since uh, I was actually enjoying retirement, but uh, <laughs> as it turns out, I'm enjoying this job even more than I was enjoying retirement, so it was turned out to be a good thing. I want to thank uh, CSIS, in particular the Post-Conflict and Reconstruction Project, uh, Mark, for, for co-hosting this with us. Um, I think it's very important that we highlight issues such as this early on. Um, I also want to thank um, Ambassador Galls and Ambassador Waller. And when she arrives, um, uh, the Special Representative of the UN Secretary General, uh, Ms. Uh, Zude, for, for joining us here by, uh, by video conference. I just want to make a, a few brief introductory remarks before we get into to the substance of, the, of this conference. I think it's important for the United States to respond to, to international threats posed by instability and insecurity, which in their most extreme forms manifest themselves as failed and failing states, not only because of the threat that they pose to our own interests, but because of the threat that they pose to the interest of citizens around the world. And in particular, in, in Africa, it's not just a humanitarian interest, or it's also a humanitarian interest to help the countries of Africa become part of the wider international and global community. Uh, for us, this means in the United States really focusing on building a civilian capability to work with host governments to help them uh, find solutions, uh, develop solutions, and implement those solutions. And please note that I put the emphasis on helping the host governments. These are not our solutions uh, to come up with. In Africa, uh, SCRS and our uh, Civilian Response Corps are, are working on several fairly substantial and important projects, including our largest overseas deployment, which is helping with the preparations for the independence referendum in southern Sudan, uh, and uh, working with our special envoy, uh, Scott Gratian, on, on on those issues there. We have also worked with the UN and other organizations in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and we've worked on developing assessments in Sudan, the DRC, and the Horn of Africa um, in situations similar to this, trying to identify the drivers of conflict and the resiliencies within host countries that will allow them to get past these conflicts. In the CAR, our hope uh, in working with, with you and with CSIS on this is that by increasing attention to the Central African Republic now, we can reduce the potential for conflict in the future. Um, this is a very difficult re uh, region. I won't get into specifics. You all will be, will be doing that. But certainly addressing issues of governance, of border control, of uh, arms, con arms flows to rebel groups, uh, dealing with the Lord's Resistance Army and the overflow from events in, in regional uh, in, uh, in other areas of the region will be critically important. Um, despite these difficulties, I mean, we there are rays of opportunity, if you will. Um, we can continue the work with uh, the peace process with the rebel groups. Uh, we can work on ensuring that the elections are held successfully. 
Uh, we can help the government to, to increase its transparency and its uh, efficiencies. And we can try to work with the entire international community to make sure that we're all supporting these same goals. Uh, and I hope that this conference will, will uh, help us to get to that point. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming. And again, thanks to CSIS for, for hosting this. And thank you, Ambassador Loftus. I'm pleased now to introduce our panelists. <clears throat> First to speak will be the US Ambassador to the Central African Republic, Lawrence Wollers, who has recently assumed his post but is serving for the second time in the CAR. He's also recently served as special uh, senior advisor to the international, for international programs at the Smithsonian Institution, executive assistant to the Under Secretary of State for Public Affairs and Public Diplomacy, and minister counselor for public affairs at the US Embassy in Moscow. Our second speaker is Ambassador Jan Krals, permanent representative of Belgium to the United Nations. Over a long and distinguished career in the Belgian Foreign Ministry, his tenure has included service as Secretary General of the Foreign Ministry, Chef de Cabinet of the Foreign Minister, uh, Diplomatic Advisor to the Prime Minister, and Deputy Chef de Cabinet and Diplomatic Advisor to the King of Belgium. The final speaker, who will be joining us through teleconference and will be arriving soon, I understand, is Ambassador Saleh Work Zude, the Special Representative of the United Nations Secretary General and head of the UN Peacebuilding Office in the Central African Republic, Volnuka. Before taking up this important post, she spent 20 years in the Ethiopian diplomatic service uh, with posts that included um, uh, ambassador and permanent representative to the African Union and ambassador to France, Senegal, and Djibouti, among others. Uh, we'll start with Ambassador Wallers. Ambassador Wallers, thank you. Uh, thank you, and thank you to, um, to SCRS, uh, Dr. Loftus, and to CCSAS for organizing this uh, discussion today. I'm not going to actually speak for very long myself. Um, I'm very much in the uh, learning mode, and I'm very pleased to see that there are so many people here. Um, I'm sure that some of you will want to learn, too, but there are also many of you who have some expertise, and I'm really interested in, in hearing from people, and particularly from the other panelists, Ambassador Grawls, uh, who have spent, uh, spent a lot more time in recent years on this than, than I have. Um, I am just coming back from all of two whole weeks in Bangui, uh, so, uh, and I did serve there uh, 20, uh, 25 years ago. So uh, let me just sort of uh, put out a little bit of an impressionistic um, set of points here to uh, sort of get things going. In many ways, these are more questions than, than answers. Um, but one of the things that struck me going back uh, to Bangui is that um, after several months here of reading in and talking to people, and the focus was all very much on conflict and post-conflict. Um, and when you get there, you, I guess because of that, the first thing that surprised me was how normal things seemed in Bangui. Um, you know, there is uh, lots of economic activity going on, lots of taxis, the markets, the stores. Um, it's, and, the, and I was able to uh, travel up country uh, uh, for a considerable, uh, went up to, uh, to Bosangoa, which is several hundred kilometers north. Um, you know, th uh, th this, is a po this is truly post-conflict in that sense. Things are going on, uh, people are getting on with it, their lives. Um, and so uh, that leads to sort of the, the question in my mind, um, is the uh, are the key set of questions for us uh, uh, p political, political, military conflict questions, or are they really economic questions? And is it are we at a point now where the, the real, really important issues for the country are how to get the economy really going again, ensuring that uh, there are enough jobs, enough economic activity for everybody? And is it possible that many of the, the tensions that we have been talking about over the last five, six years there um, will go away almost of, on their own if people have enough ac economic activity in front of them, enough economic hope in, in front of them? Um, 
I don't have the answer to that, but it's certainly something that that struck me in the, the two, two weeks I, I was there. Um, the other thing that was really quite interesting uh, compared to when I'd been there before was the number of NGOs with SUVs and the very, very heavy focus on this humanitarian framework for uh, the foreign donor relationship with the country. Um, uh, that certainly wasn't the case, again, when I was there before. Um, and there again comes the question, are we at that point where we need to be shifting over from a humanitarian framework focus to a development one? Um, I think that will be happening to some extent in and of its own. Uh, the, uh, the European Union, I know, which is uh, a major uh, donor, um, many of their programs that they've been developing are really just coming out of the, the design stage. And, uh, that's going to be uh, very important because one thing you can see clearly is for the future you desperately need more roads, more energy. Uh, that was another thing that struck me after uh, this time that um, the, the, the lack of consist consistent energy supply was a great break to economic activity. Um, more focus on ag agriculture, which is clearly going to be the comparative advantage of the country uh, for quite some time. Um, and then uh, another perception that struck me in talking to, uh, talking to a number of people around town there was um, education, that the country's gone through uh, a couple decades in which because of the political instability and because of payment of salary, et cetera, um, uh, young people have not received a consistently uh, strong education. And so that, that raises the question that, and people were asking me this, certainly both on the business side and elsewhere, is that who are going to be our interlocutors and who are going to be the people running uh, the economy in, in uh, 10 years from, from now. Uh, one, one NGO mentioned that they had a, a plot, they had um, advertised for an accountant. And in, and in uh, Cameroon, they would have had 100 applications. And in Bangui, they couldn't find one. Um, so that technical training um, is going to be an enormous challenge. Um, and then last, of course, in the very near term, uh, the elections. Um, really pleased to see the high level of popular interest in the elections in Bangui. Uh, lots of discussion on the radio, some excellent um, spots, uh, radio spots, explaining to people uh, what their role was in the, uh, the registration uh, process. Um, but clearly interest in that, uh, people were were assuming they were going to have an election and assuming they were going to, to vote and vote freely. Um, and that's obviously extremely important. So, you know, my conclusion is uh, 2011 is going to be a very important year for the Central African Republic. Um, if the um, elections can move forward in a way that everyone sees them as being, uh, being uh, uh, fair and accepted, we can move on with uh, the DDR process and reconciliation and, and drive forward the economy just a bit, um, then uh, that's a very good find for, for, the, for, for the future. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it on that sort of hopeful note and uh, turn it over to people with more expertise than I have at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Uh, now I turn to Ambassador Kralls. Uh, Ambassador Quarterman and Ambassador uh, Loftus, thank you very much for your introductory remarks. And uh, to Ambassador Wolders, I would like to say, uh, well, we didn't know each other. We met each other a couple of, of, of minutes ago. But I'm sure we're going to work uh, hand in hand. And as I understand, uh, U.S. government has decided to get more involved in the Central African Republic, and that's uh, uh, a very good uh, uh, omen, and uh, I wish you uh, all success in your new mission. Um, thank you very much also to CISS. It's, uh, it doesn't happen often that uh, the Central African Republic is uh, uh, 
on the agenda of a meeting. Uh, for many, many, many years, it has been a forgotten country. And I always use this expression that sometimes I had the feeling that the international community deliberately had decided to forget about the Central African Republic. Because unfortunately, as you probably know, uh, it has a, a sad history of uh, internal strife, civil war, uh, major parts of the territory being uh, occupied by uh, rebels or bandits and uh, the control of the central government extending just over part of the territory. With all the human suffering uh, you can imagine, it's all there. Well, it was there in the Central African Republic up to years ago. Uh, so it's good that uh, the Central African Republic is uh, on the agenda of uh, uh, famous institutions like this one. And two weeks ago, uh, I think, uh, we had a major success in New York because you know that the Millennium Development Goals Summit took place uh, two weeks ago. And we organized a side event on the first day, the very first day of the MDG Summit on the Central African Republic. So that this hadn't happened for years. And uh, it was attended by Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, uh, by uh, the President of the African Union, Mr. Ping, uh, by the Vice President for Africa of the World Bank, by the European Commission of Development, and there uh, was a high level attendance. And I think this was for the first time that this happened. But this shows, I think, that uh, there is a renewed interest by the international community for the Central African Republic. And why is this? Uh, because the Central Africans themselves have decided to turn the page over this, uh, these dark uh, 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 years they have behind them. And um, back in 2008, uh, peace agreements were signed with uh, the major uh, rebel groups and the political uh, forces of the Central African Republic uh, also concluded uh, 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 a kind of peace agreement. They call it uh, the um, uh, a dialogue and um, the political dialogue. So they really decided uh, to turn the page over that sad part of their history and to uh, envisage uh, a new future. And that was the basis for a, new, a renewed engagement by the international community. And in fact, the UN, uh, United Nations, uh, reacted favorably to that because they set up a peace-building commission for the Central African Republic. Perhaps a word on what a peace-building commission is. Uh, you may remember that in 2005, the UN celebrated its 60th anniversary. And there was a summit meeting in 2005, uh, around this time, in September, well, September 2005. And there was a lot of talk about reforming uh, the UN after 60 years, because as we all know, the UN probably needs uh, 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 reform, uh, because it's not always adapted anymore to the realities of today's world. And one of the decisions that were taken back in 2005 was to set up a PBC, a Peace Building Commission. And this was one of the new feature features. Uh, this is now part of the uh, UN architecture. And what is peace building about in a UN context? Uh, it is about assisting countries that are in a post-conflict phase, but that are still in a very fragile situation and countries that are not yet eligible for the traditional aid tools we know. Um, and the Central African Republic is one of these countries. As I just explained, uh, they um, concluded peace agreement, an internal peace agreement with rebels and with the, with the political forces. So they were considered as being in a post-conflict phase, but they needed assistance because of the fragility of the situation. Uh, and that is where the Peace Building Commission steps in as international community, as UN. Uh, we step in to assist these countries in their needs uh, during that uh, fragile episode in their history in order to prepare them 
uh, to receive the more traditional uh, 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 development aid. And I see that in the meantime, Madame Zeude is, uh, but she isn't listening yet. Uh, but she, she knows my story, she knows my story. Now, just uh, for your information, this peace building architecture uh, in, in New York, it has a commission, a peace building commission. It's a kind of intergovernmental advisory uh, uh, body comprised of 31 uh, member states of the, of the UN. Uh, the role of this commission is to uh, bring together uh, international donors um, and financial institutions, national governments, and um, uh, troop contributing countries in certain countries. Um, a peace building commission tries to ensure coordination uh, of the different aid uh, uh, efforts that are being made in a, in a country that is on the peace building um, agenda. One of the major tasks of a peace building commission is to find resources, to mobilize resources uh, and I myself have been very active on that. Um, and then, of course, um, another um, objective of the Peace Building Commission is to extend the period of attention given by the international community beyond the initial post-conflict phase, because very often countries are on the radar screen for a certain time, and then after uh, a couple of months, they disappear from the radar screen on the international, of the international community. A peace building commission's role is to keep countries that are in a post-conflict phase definitely and strongly and firmly on the radar screen of the international community and more particularly the donor, uh, the donor community. There's also a peace building fund. Uh, uh, it's a kind of uh, trust fund that uh, has been set up in 2006. Um, it's uh, managed by the Secretary General of the UN, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. Uh, the initial funding target of $250 uh, million uh, uh, has now been um, overtaken, and I think last year it received $348 million from voluntary contributions of UN uh, member states. And the basic role of the Peace Building Fund is to address uh, critical funding gaps that may exist in uh, countries that are on the peace building agenda. Um, for the moment, 16 countries uh, uh, make contributions uh, to, uh, no, sorry, 16 countries have been uh, assisted by the Peace Building Fund. And then there's the Peace Building Support Office, and uh, uh, Philip Helminger sitting here to my, my left is, uh, is a member of the UN Secretariat. He's working for the Peace Building uh, Support Office, and uh, they offer expertise and they manage also the Peace Building uh, Funds. And by the way, uh, Philip van den Bulke to my uh, left is, uh, is from my mission, and uh, we are working together on Central African Republic. That's what I wanted to say, just to give you uh, a short introduction on what peace building is in, in the UN. Um, I have been elected uh, chair of the Peace Building Commission for the Central African Republic back in June 2008. So I've been chair now for two years and a couple of months. It's a mandate I like very much because you can put personal commitment in it. And I tend to say that I'm so naive to think that as a chair of a PBC you could make a difference. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's a good experience because I sense that this Peace Building Commission has the potential of becoming a success story for the Central Africans themselves and for the UN. Um, and let me briefly explain why I think that we are on the right track. Um, one of the first things we had to do when this Peace Building Commission was set up in June 2008 was to um, uh, was to develop a kind of work plan, uh, a kind of roadmap. What are we going to do? We, international community, and the Central African government, and, and broader, not just the government, but the Central Africans uh, at large. So we worked on that for a couple of months, uh, but we had a very, very good uh, uh, dialogue with the Central African authorities. Uh, they have some very good ministers, and the president, President Bozize, was very, very helpful also. Uh, my main interlocutor in Bangui is the Minister of Planning, the Minister of State uh, in charge of planning, Mr. Uh, uh, Maliko, uh, who's a former UN uh, official, 
so it's a good training. I mean, the, 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 those people that have been working for the UN, uh, Mr. Quarterburn, as you may know. Uh, and uh, so we, we, we drafted a, a work plan. Uh, which was approved uh, by the Peace Building Commission and by the Central African Republic. Um, and let me perhaps briefly say what is in this work plan, because um, and Ambassador Wallace already referred to that. When you go to this country, um, literally when you go outside the capital, Bangui, literally everything has been destroyed by this terrible civil war. No bridges, no schools, no clinics, no roads, everything, literally everything has been destroyed. And then there are still these uh, regions where uh, rebellions are, are uh, or rebels are active, and, and I, I define them as rebels, but I mean, it's a kind of mix of political opposition, banditry, I mean, that type of thing. And uh, these rebels are exploiting the, the, the local population. Uh, I have done a road for, for, for a couple of, I mean, you can see where villages were, used to be, but they have been destroyed, they have been burned, and the local population is still, is, is again living in the bush as, 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 as so many years ago, in, in, in appalling sanitary conditions and, and so on. That is the Central African Republic. It gives you an idea of the task ahead, which is uh, uh, gigantic. But as Peace Building Commission, we said, without security all over the territory, uh, you shouldn't start doing development work. You need to secure the whole territory. So security is our first priority. Bring back security uh, to, to the territory and to the people of the Central African Republic. What does that mean? Basically two things. First of all, you need to disarm and demobilize the rebels and give them a future in their own society, a normal, a normal future. And that is what we call DDR, demobilization, disarmament, and reintegration of these people. Uh, we had to mobilize resources for that. Uh, we have been working with UNDP, uh, the uh, UN uh, Development Program. And this DDR is now underway. Uh, and particularly the DD, the disarmament and the, and the demobilization phase is now uh, uh, fully underway. Uh, and that's good. And we did find the money. Uh, uh, what's the budget again, Philippe, for, for the DDR? It's 31 million. We did find the money. Uh, the Central African uh, government has been helpful, but of course the major part of this budget had to come from the international community. The fact that we did find the money indicates that the international community is rediscovering is understanding that something needs uh, to be done in the Central African Republic. That's one part of the security uh, uh, agenda of our PBC. The other one is SSR, it's security sector reform. Useless to say that the uh, army and the police force of the Central African Republic could perform better, to put it mildly. Uh, they are underpaid, they, are, uh, they didn't get uh, an adequate training, there's a problem of discipline, and there have been violations of human rights by the army and by the police force. So we need to do something about the army in order to give the citizens confidence again in their own army and in their own, in their own police force. So that is what I mean by uh, our first priority, bringing back security to the entire territory and to the population of the Central uh, uh, African Republic which has suffered so much uh, uh, from this uh, uh, situation. The second priority is uh, legal security, uh, if I may call it like that. The second priority is about the rule of law and it's about good governance, because there too, of course, uh, a lot of, uh, of, uh, of things can be done. Strangely enough, uh, they have good laws in the Central African Republic when it comes to human rights and so on. The, the, the laws are, are, are quite good. Also, for example, the mining, the mining code is, 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 is adequate, but there is a problem of implementation of, uh, of laws and, and, and legislation. Um, so we're working on that also, because bringing back legal security to the country means that private investment will come, will follow, but will follow 
uh, uh, private investors never go to countries where there is a risk of, uh, of uh, legal uh, uncertainty. And when it comes to uh, rule of law, of course, uh, elections are very important. I mean, democracy and, and the, the level of democracy. Uh, the Central African Republic held uh, elections back in 2005, which went well. Uh, they took place, I mean, there were international observers, and they took place in acceptable circumstances. Uh, elections, uh, new elections were due this year, but for good reasons, uh, because preparations were not yet uh, where they had to be. They had to be postponed, but they are now uh, going to take place in, uh, in January of next year. And this was a consensual decision by the majority and by the opposition, uh, which is good. So elections, and again, uh, what's the budget for the elections? Uh, 27. 27. Uh, but again, we did find the money for that. And again, this shows that the international community believes or starts to believe in the Central African Republic. Uh, so that's our second priority. It's about, um, it's about um, um, uh, good governance and, 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 and elections, of course, are a, an important part of that. Um, there are still some security concerns because, as you know, uh, there is, first of all, the phenomenon of the LRA, the Lord Resistance Army. Uh, they are in the southeastern part of the Central African Republic, not for political purposes, but they just uh, consider the Central African Republic as uh, a place where they can come to rest and, and it's a kind of refuge uh, before they uh, uh, take on new, new campaigns. Uh, but the effects of their presence in that part of the, of the, of the, of the territory are, are devastating for the local population. Uh, then there are the rebellions in the northwest of the country, and there's a peacekeeping operation uh, which is um, uh, being taken care of by the uh, economic community of Central Africa, uh, SEAC, uh, the Mikopax peacekeeping operation. And then in the northeastern uh, corner of the country, which is close, which borders uh, uh, Chad, uh, part of the Minurkat UN peacekeeping operations is, is present on the Central African territory. Uh, Minurkat, unfortunately, is coming to an end uh, uh, by the end of this year, and uh, the Security Council is now examining uh, what to do uh, about, uh, about that part of the territory because we can't leave it without any, any, any peacekeeping uh, uh, presence there. Um, that is basically what I wanted to say, what we are doing as a, as a peace building uh, commission. Uh, perhaps a word also on our partnerships because as a peace building commission, uh, uh, we, we can't uh, do our, our things alone. Uh, we need partnerships. We have a very good partnership. We have established that now with the World Bank, which is, which is a bit new in a UN framework. Uh, and and um, before coming here, I was at the World Bank next doors to discuss uh, uh, the follow-up of the event I mentioned, which took place in the, in the margins of the MDG summit. Uh, we have a very good relationship, of course, with the different uh, UN uh, bodies and programs like UNDP and so on. We also have a very good relationship with the European Union, which is one of the major donors in the, in the Central African Republic, together with the World Bank and, and with France, the, I mean, the former colonial power. But, I mean, only three major donors, which shows that the Central African Republic is still a kind of aid orphan. And that is also the task of the PBC to increase and to enlarge the, the family of, of, of donors to that country. My feeling is that the, central, the PBC for the Central African Republic, as I said already, has the potential of becoming a good uh, success story. Of course, we will need to continue, uh, as we have, been, uh, uh, we have been very, very busy on that. There is a very good ownership by the Central African uh, Republic itself. I could feel that over these two years, this ownership has increased. Uh, at the beginning, of course, it was new for the Central African government, this, this peace-building uh, uh, experience. And, and I didn't have always the feeling that the ownership was 100%. But over the, the months and after two years, I can say that I'm very happy with the cooperation uh, we have established between uh, the UN and, uh, and the Central African uh, uh, Republic. So these were a number of comments uh, I wanted to make, but um, uh, let's also listen to uh, Madame Zebre, the special representative of the Secretary General. Uh, she has arrived, and uh, uh, we rely very much on her leadership in CAR to guide our work, as she, she knows. 
And while the PBC, as an intergovernmental body, is not present on the ground, we are very, very fortunate to be able to count on uh, SRSG Zevde, uh, which we gladly and uh, wholeheartedly uh, support. Thank you. Ambassador Carls, thank you very much. Um, especially thank you for that endorsement of uh, UN staff and uh, and and and, uh, and management, which one doesn't always hear. So I appreciate that as someone who's recently come from the UN. Um, we're I'm pleased and honored now to uh, to introduce uh, Ambassador Saleh Work Zudi. Uh, before you start. Um, uh, uh, Ambassador, I, I just would like to, to catch you up. We've, um, uh, we have heard now from Ambassador Loftus, who heads the uh, Department of States, uh, sorry, um, who, who is the Department of States Coordinator for I'm Reconstruction sorry. and Stabilization. Um, oh, you can't, okay. Um, we are no, gonna no, try to- Can you hear me, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes, no, can, can you, you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. No, it's, yes, I can hear you very clearly. It's just to tell you that I have been here since the very beginning. Ah. You couldn't see me, but I could, I could see ah. you and hear you, listen to you. So don't worry. I have okay. been listening to, to all what you have said about you. our work here. Thank you very much. So don't worry. We thank, been... thank you. That's actually one of the benefits of video conference. You can put a picture up uh, and listen in uh, uh, surreptitiously. So thank you very much. Then without further ado... Um, Ambassador, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like, uh, first of all, to, to, to tell you how uh, pleased I am to join you from Bangui with this um, uh, technology. And uh, thank you for having accommodated this uh, uh, link uh, between uh, Washington and Bangui via video conference. Uh, and I would like to really thank the, organizer for, for the organizers for having invited me uh, to join you. It's very difficult to, to take the floor after those uh, who have spoke before me and uh, who know uh, very, very well the Central African Republic. Uh, but um, I'll try uh, to stick to what you have asked me to do, to... Uh, concentrate on the pressing issues, and then I will, I will of, of course, uh, touch some um, on a base with some issues that uh, re concerns also the, the, the region. First of all, uh, it's very important to have this kind of uh, gathering. As it has been said, CIR is a forgotten country, an aid orphan, and it's very important to really have this kind of, of uh, interaction where the CAR will be kept uh, on the radar screen of the international community. This comes after the high-level event which took place on the 20th of September in New York on the sidelines of the MDGs summit, which was a very good meeting. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank Ambassador Graubs and the World Bank, the Vice President, for having convened this meeting. I would like to tell you from here from Bangui that the, the, the reception here has been very positive and it has given really confidence to the Central Africans. So uh, this has been a very welcome uh, move. Uh, and also, uh, I'm very happy to participate in a meeting where we talk about the Central African Republic because uh, <clears throat> uh, quite often, uh, this country will be uh, cited or quoted in light of uh, what's happening in the region, uh, Darfur, Chad, Sudan, El Are, and what have you. It's very important to talk about the homegrown, the, the, the specific problems of the CAR. And by so doing, I think we will help um, have a secured and, and, and prosperous country, which will help the security and prosperity of the sub-region. So uh, th th this is really to thank you for, for what uh, you have done. On the pressing issues, uh, I would like to focus on elections first. On elections to say, first and foremost, that the problem that we are having, to start with the problem uh, that we are having, is a perception about elections 
a, a perception that we have on the continent here in Africa about elections. Elections be, being the panacea to other problems, to the challenges that the country faces. It has to be kept at the level where it should be kept. It's a, a, a very important step into a democratic process, but it's not an end by itself. So I think it's very important to know that. And um, I mean, to have it in mind, of course, we all know that. Uh, um, and, and here, at one point, it was elections, and elections will solve anything, uh, everything, rather. Now, um, I, I remember uh, that uh, even the African Union, <coughs> sorry, had to, 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 to talk and uh, discuss this issue in 2008 at the summit of heads of state. Uh, because most of the conflict on the continent are, um, you know, uh, the consequences of elections. So uh, a good reflection has to be conducted, and that was the, the directives uh, of, of the heads of state, and we really hope that will, this will take place. After some ups and downs, uh, uh, we have the feeling that now we are on the right track uh, as far as the elections are concerned. For us, the bottom line was not to have elections that will bring us back to violence. This is a peace-building mission, and uh, this is what we have tried to do. We have to be able to move forward. We have to be able to have, in 2010, elections better than 20, 2005 that will help the country move forward. That was really the bottom line where the international co community rallied around. But because of the um, uh, lack of, of professionalism from the uh, Electoral Commission and, and many delays, uh, the, the elections had to be postponed for, uh, I think, to, to, twice. Now <clears throat> we are in a critical moment where the, the, sun, the census, the voter census, is taking place throughout the country. The Electoral Commission has sent uh, all the commissioners on the ground. This is very important because in Africa, um, we used to have in the 70s, 60s, 70s, post, post, post independence era, where uh, to win an election you have some modus operandi, you stuff ballot boxes and so on and so forth, then you can secure your success. Then came the issue of voters' list, and that is very important. Once you have a consensual list, I, I think the rest can easily be conducted. Now, <clears throat> uh, this date has been fixed, in, uh, I mean, it's a con uh, by consensus by all the entities, uh, 23rd of January. Now they are on the ground, the census is taking place. It's very important that we uh, get a consensual uh, voters list so that we have um, uh, a good uh, elections in, uh, in, in January. Uh, we have uh, had reports that um, um, the, the, the registration process was slow. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a steering committee meeting, um, and one of the topics that uh, I intend to have on the agenda is to, to, to see how we can really um, push the process forward and, 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 and uh, invite really the population to, to, to go to the, uh, uh, the voting, uh, the um, register, registration um, places and register. After we have that, I think we will be able to, to have, to, to go to, uh, uh, um, to have a serene atmosphere where we can have these elections uh, held. Uh, as Ambassador Graul uh, said, the international community has now come up to its commitment. It has been a bit slow, but uh, now uh, there is no funding gap, and uh, uh, the, 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 the rest of the process can easily be uh, funded. There are a few technical problems, but uh, I hope that uh, we will be in a position to, to uh, overcome them. Uh, this is where we stand, and we hope that uh, by the end of October we will be uh, fixed on the, on the voters' uh, list. Uh, uh, so um, 
the, the international community on the ground um, is um, <coughs> helping the process. Uh, we have set up um, um, a steering committee, as I said earlier. Um, uh, as you know, uh, the, the Department of Political Affairs of the United Nations uh, give assistance to this kind of, of process. There was a need assessment mission which came here um, a year ago, in fact, and, and, um, and uh, suggested that a steering committee be set up. So that's where we uh, discussed the, the different issues. Uh, so we hope uh, that uh, we we're moving uh, into the right direction. Um, now, uh, we have some issues that we'll have uh, to settle with the Electoral Commission, but uh, let me uh, s uh, remain on, the, on, on this optimistic and positive tone that uh, um, we are really on the right track and uh, we're all moving toward the same direction. I must say that um, the, the, the message that we heard during the high-level event uh, two weeks ago has also helped uh, because we have uh, um, the message was, messages were very clear calling for these elections to be held as soon as possible, I mean, to, 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 to commit themselves to the date that um, they have all together fixed, and, um, uh, and for the international community to continue uh, being involved um, after the, 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 um, the elections. So uh, since we see good prospects uh, towards uh, that, I think that uh, uh, it's um, in uh, everybody's interest to have these elections um, um, done as soon as possible and have them uh, at the back so that we can move forward. This is what I can say uh, as far as elections are concerned. The second point I would like to raise is the, the whole um, security sector reform, which is very important to, to the country. Uh, you will see when I, um, when I uh, will mention later on uh, the LRA issue, um, the security, the defense forces is almost inexistent um, outside, outside uh, Bangui. So this sector reform is very important. Um, Binuka, um, uh, which has been transformed into an integrated office since January, uh, has now since um, now with the new structure a unit in charge of the SSR. So we will be fully involved in, in that and uh, we, we really count on the international community to come on board after the elections to really help this process. But part of this process is the DDR as mentioned by Ambassador Rauls earlier. Um, the DDR is a process that has uh, gone really slow, but it has started moving now. But let me uh, say from the outset that um, when we talk about rebels in the Central African Republic, uh, we have to be, um, uh, come on, the, um, uh, I mean, nuance the, the, that, because we're not talking about rebels as we know them in the DRC or Sierra Leone or Liberia or the country where I come from with a clear political agenda and so on and so forth. The rebels here are more than, uh, you know, bandits and, uh, and, and gangs operating on highways and so on uh, and so forth. Not really more than that. We're talking about 8,000 of them without even verifying the list, the total that has been given by the five um, um, rebel movements that has, have signed the Libreville Peace Agreement is a total of 8,000. This has to be, of course, verified, and it's, it's not a big number, but um, it's all, all around uh, the northern part of, of the country. Uh, now, <clears throat> the biggest movement is, the no is in the northwest, uh, the verification of the, leaf, uh, of the list of the com of combatants have been uh, going on for some time. Now it's it's over. So the next step is the D1, which is disarmament. So um, we were really happy after more than a year of, of this long process that we can at least uh, see uh, the light at the end of the of, of of the tunnel and talk about disarmament. 
and then, of course, demobilization. We couldn't do the same thing in the Northeast uh, because of uh, first logistical problems during the rainy season. You cannot go to the, no to the eastern part of the country, to the north, to many parts, of course. Bridges uh, will break and so on, roads uh, cannot be used and so on and so forth. So uh, that was not uh, been able. But we have, we have prepared a plan and we will see how to move to it. But uh, the northwest is very important because out of 8,000, 5,000 are concerned uh, with this, uh, with this, uh, with this uh, DDR program in the Northeast. But of course, we will try to have a parallel uh, uh, process both in the Northwest and in the Northeast. But um, the, the, the departure of Minurkat and so on might not help uh, uh, our, uh, our process. Um, uh, this is where we are. But the most important thing, when you ask someone to disarm, I'm not a technician in disarmament but, uh, or an expert, but is to know of what tomorrow will be. The R part, the reintegration part, is very important. So uh, this is uh, where we are now. The government uh, is proposing a strategy, which is very good, because we will all have to support the government's strategy. Uh, so we are, we are looking in to, into it and see how we can move forward. But of course, it has to do with the whole development issue and so on and so forth, and the level of the host community, which is very low, and the poverty uh, is very high in, in the country. So uh, we, we need to have um, to lift up the whole community, I, I would say, um, in, this, in this process. So this is uh, where, where we stand. And um, the, up to now, um, the response is, is very encouraging. We have a project which, which is on the pipeline from the European Union, which we can use immediately for the northeast. Uh, sorry, northwest. So uh, uh, this R part will have to be uh, clearly defined. We need to have a clear mapping and to know uh, who will uh, do what. Uh, the third point I would like to raise uh, among uh, our, our, our one of the main mandate that we have here is to um, follow uh, the, the implementation of the recommendation of the inclusive political dialogue that took place back in December 2008. Elections are part of it, DDR is part of it, and uh, many other issues. That's very important if we want to move in, a, in, in this consensual uh, base because all of them has agreed to these recommendations. But I must say that the implementation rate is very low. Last week we had a meeting of, of, of the, of the follow-up committee and uh, the report was not that much encouraging. So we will be uh, again highly involved in order to help um, this uh, be implemented uh, fully. And that's uh, very important, and we'll see how we can also uh, you know, involve um, other, other uh, UN agencies in, in that regard. Um, when we talk of, by the way, of integrated uh, peace building mission, it's to make uh, our action on the ground more coherent and uh, that the UN can, you know, deliver as one in, 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 in the CAR. This is what we are trying, uh, trying to do uh, currently. Um, <clears throat> just a few words on, on, on maybe development, which is uh, also very important. As I said, there is a linkage, of course, between the objectives, political security and development objectives. It's very important. Uh, and this has been um, clearly stated. It's one of, uh, these are different pillars of the PRSP here and the strategic framework of the Peace Building Commission. Uh, so um, uh, the development is very important. I think that the government has to be encouraged for the work it has done. Uh, the macroeconomic performance remains uh, satisfactory. There are progresses that has been also said uh, last week, two weeks ago, in, in, um, in New York. Now, <clears throat> I think that uh, after two decades of disorder, 
uh, we have to come back to work and uh, and really work and uh, and job creation and so on and so forth. The cake that everybody is trying to share is very small, and this is the public service. It has to, we have to have a larger cake, which uh, the, would include the private sector, and where we can uh, really have job creation and so on and so forth. The government is expected to create the conditions for that to happen. Currently, the humanitarian aid is very important, and I don't think that um, um, they have, the, the CR have reached uh, the stage where they can live without it. But of course, we need a, a, a more long-term vision, and uh, development is definitely very important. And when we talk about development, this is a country uh, where anything is possible, the potential is very high. The population for 620 square kilometers is only 4 million, and they have used only 2% of the total arable land that they have. And uh, I mean, when you see it as face value, it's very easy and very simple. Uh, but um, the, the conditions have to be created. The problem of development are, are uh, deeply rooted. So I think it's very important that we also concentrate on those and uh, try to uh, encourage and, uh, you know, uh, development assistance in order to, to, to uh, tap the, the high potential that uh, this um, country has in developing the, the, the private sector, as I said, infrastructure, the channels of distribution of goods and services, and so on and so forth. By doing so, we will have also consolidated the peace building that we are trying to do here. Um, just a few words on, on the LRA, because I was also asked to, 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 to talk about it. LRA um, has appeared here uh, uh, around 2008 in the triangle between DRC, Sudan, and Southern Sudan, and uh, the CR. They were, uh, the LRA was there operating small groups for a certain period of time, and, um, and it has caused the displacement of uh, around 20,000 people here. Um, the modus operandi and the patterns of violence are uh, those well known, unfortunately, and uh, raiding villages and for food and uh, abductions. Um, so, um, uh, these are remnants, of course, for the, of those who were in the uh, Garamba Park uh, in, in the DRC and who have uh, uh, managed to, to move to the CR, uh, where uh, they know that uh, they will not have uh, a resistance here because the state authority is very weak and uh, they can resist for a longer period of time. Um, so they have been evolving in a, another triangle within the southeast of the Central African Republic. Uh, since a few weeks, uh, we have heard that uh, there is a group which is uh, um, supposed to be belonging to LRA, LRA itself, has moved northwards, and um, some of the attacks have been uh, said uh, uh, to be conducted by LRA elements, and uh, if, um, if the attacks are confirmed, if it is an LRA attack, then it would have been the first time that they are operating the mission area of, uh, of Minurkat. But they have been moving along an axis towards north, and um, we don't know exactly where they, have, um, they are aiming to, but this is a small number, 40, 50 people, we don't know exactly, but this is what, uh, what's, uh, what uh, is going on. Um, so, of course, it's not a life-threatening issue for, for the CR, but this is part of the country, especially the, the east, which is very vast, very scarcely uh, populated, and where they will not have um, a, a resistance. Now, uh, with some reinforcement of the uh, armed forces, they have uh, been able to increase the number in the southeast, and I know that some partners have, have agreed to, to help them. And, um, and of course, the uh, UPDF uh, also was, uh, is giving hand to the FACAS here on the ground. They were even uh, deployed uh, up in the northern part of, uh, northeast part of the country. So uh, this is uh, uh, what um, 
it looks like as, as far as the, the, the LRA is concerned. So no, not to take much time, I, I will uh, stop here and maybe um, listen to other comments and, and try to answer to questions. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Ambassador, thank you very much, and thank you to all our panelists for um, comprehensive, interesting uh, comments. Uh, we have a full house today. Um, I hope there are a number of questions out there, and I'd like to, uh, to get started on a uh, discussion now uh, between our panelists and, uh, and the audience. Um, we have uh, uh, CSIS staff with microphones, so please, when I identify you, wait for the microphone, and then ask your question. And there's a gentleman right here who raised his hand. Aisha, yeah, right here. I, I think there's a microphone in front of you for those sitting at the table. Thank you. I am from the CR. My name is Jean-Pierre Le Boudère. I have a few comments. One is, I believe democracy is a process. And to send monitors for elections every four or five years is not enough. It should be put in perspective, and I believe strongly that we should have some kind of technical assistance for those elected so that they know how to build their capacity and uh, deliver the job properly. And this takes money, accompany the people on the ground. I know years ago, I volunteers for parliamentarians for global action. I believe that in the case of Namibia, you should know that they had even training arrangements with uh, representatives of Canada and Germany. I think it is something important. We need to think that democracy will be built over the years and also have a plan of action so that the objectives, the immediate objectives are limited. Can I make a suggestion that we take a couple of questions, um, uh, bundle them together, and then, uh, and then the panelists can respond. So is there anyone else who would like to ask a question, make a comment? May, may I just? Please, sir. No. Uh, 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 about the CR, I think that it is important to see also the CR not uh, in its capacity to create a problem for neighboring countries. It is a small country but it has more than 1,000 kilometers of border with the Democratic Republic of the Congo, 700 with Chad, and if it becomes a failed state, it will threaten all the efforts of the uh, international community in these countries. So this is something that I think is important also uh, to, take it, to, to take into account. Those are my, my two comments, thank you. Thank you very much. And, um uh, Ma'am, did you have your, your hand up as well for a comment? Okay. Well, if there are no further questions for this round, why don't I turn it over to the panel to respond? Thank you. Thank you. Well, on your first question, um, I, I, I fully agree. Uh, I fully agree uh, uh, democracy is a, is a process, and... Uh, the international community, as uh, we have explained, is, is fully involved in that, uh, in, the, uh, in providing logistical support, but also, of course, in providing technical support and, more importantly, uh, financial support. Um, it is clear that uh, in the future, uh, the Central Africans need to build capacity, electoral capacity, to put it like that. Uh, because uh, in five years' time there will be new elections and uh, uh, organizing elections is, is not always easy, particularly in a country where infrastructure has been destroyed. And uh, it's a vast country uh, with a rather small uh, population. But the political will is there, and that is, of course, very, very important. And we are integrating this need for a more long-term strategy in our own work uh, program of the Peace Building Commission. So in the future, we want to assist the Central African Republic in building this uh, capacity, this uh, electoral uh, capacity, 
And um, as Peace Building Commission, we have been uh, in touch with the uh, Interparliamentary Union uh, inter alia, uh, because they provide technical assistance to governments and to parliaments. Um, so um, we, we have picked up uh, that idea because, uh, again, I fully agree with you, it's a process and it's not one blip on a radar screen an election. Uh, you need to uh, provide assistance so that uh, countries uh, can uh, take on this, uh, this task in the future alone. And also in terms of financial commitments, of course, each time elections take place, each time the government should come up with, with more money and at the end of the day, a government should be in a position to come up with a budget on its own. But that, of course, uh, is, is not yet the case in the Central African Republic for uh, obvious reasons. I also fully agree with this regional dimension. Uh, uh, this, this country is... Uh, Central Africa Republic is at the heart of, of that, that region and uh, the political situation has been influenced by uh, events taking place in, in neighboring countries. It has been negatively influenced but there has also been a very positive uh, contribution by the region and uh, uh, former President Bongo of, of Gabon, for example, uh, who died a year ago, but he has been very, very, very uh, effective and very supportive of this process of reconciliation in the Central African Republic. If the political, inclusive political dialogue, uh, which was referred to, has taken place, if these peace agreements have been signed with the different rebel groups, it was also uh, thanks to the, to the uh, personal involvement of uh, former President uh, uh, Bongo of uh, Gabon. And again, I mean, this peacekeeping operation that is uh, present now in the north-western uh, part of the country, it's a regional uh, uh, peacekeeping operation. So I couldn't agree more uh, with you. And of course, the question can be raised also, what is going to be the effect after the referendum in Sudan, when South Sudan becomes uh, independent? Uh, because that is the expectation, that that is going to be the outcome of, of the referendum. What could be the implications for the, the Central African Republic? It's a very, very important question, and it's good that the international community is already now thinking um, about that. But um, I'm sure Madame Zewde uh, would like to comment on these two questions also. Ambassador Zewde, please. I don't know what I can add. Uh, thank you. I, I don't think I will have m more to add uh, on, on what Ambassador Grouls has said. It's very important, of course, uh, to have um, to, to know that, um, I mean, democracy is a process. It cannot be uh, built um, uh, overnight. That's uh, very important. That's obvious. Uh, so w an election, as, as it has been said, has, we have to start preparing the elections as soon as we finish one. I mean, uh, this is how uh, it, it has to go. It cannot be a surprise. It cannot come as a surprise. This is what I wanted to say. But the capacity issue is also very important. And we see it now uh, with, um, with the Electoral Commission and the members and those around, I mean, uh, uh, a number of uh, People have been recruited for the census and so on and so forth. So there is, of, of course, a problem of capacity. This has to be done uh, long before the elections uh, day um, uh, gets uh, close. So uh, that's uh, very important. And it's not only uh, elections. Uh, democracy means uh, uh, many other uh, <laughs> things, too. So that has to be taken into account. So this technical assistance. Uh, has to be there all um, um, permanently, I would say. The regional dimension is also very important. As I said, um, <clears throat> the CAR was at, on, on many occasions, um, you know, forgotten or seen as an appending to uh, other issues um, because there are many um, other, uh, you know, uh, issues that 
has, um, that uh, remain high on the agenda of the international community. Sudan, the referendum in South Sudan, the, 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 the impact on, 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 on the region, um, the Chad-Sudan relationship, and so on and so forth, DRC. We're going to have elections in almost all countries. I mean, normal democratic elections, I would say. Uh, so uh, this is very important. CAR is really at the heart of, of this uh, Central African region. So uh, um, uh, helping this country stabilize and have a, 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 you know, um, a lasting peace will be definitely helping the region. But of course, uh, this uh, dimension of, of regional dimension has to be taken um, care of, especially the one with um, happening in the Sudan in the very near future. <clears throat> Thank you, Ambassador Zude. Ambassador Wallers? Yes, I obviously agree very much with what um, it was said before me. Um, obviously, it's very important that uh, that people see their role and their right not just to vote, but to continue to exercise um, accountability over a government um, after the elections as well. And that's certainly something we need to be, be thinking about, you know, accountability with their elected representatives to the assembly, for example, the role of journalists. There are lots of things uh, that can and should be th um, thought about. Um, that said, uh, the elections are not by themselves enough for democracy, but in a sense they are a precondition to move forward. We do need to um, ensure that these elections d do happen, that they are accepted by everyone as being a representative, um, because if we can't do that, then it's very difficult to move forward on, on, on the rest. So I think the next, that's why our focus will be on the elections over the next several months. Thank you very much. Um, the gentleman here. Rebels are really little more than bandits looking to get some income. Uh, I would think strong agricultural development would help to uh, uh, end some of the circumstances that essentially have to push resources into into security and security sector reform. I wonder if, if, we, if we could hear a little bit about any special efforts that are being made in the area of agricultural reform or agricultural development. Thank you very much. Maybe we'll start with Ambassador Zude. Uh, the gentleman, we couldn't, we couldn't hear him. Uh, you you, you couldn't hear the question. Um, it, really, it, it, all. No, no. Okay, to, to, uh, to, to boil it down, um, uh, it, it was a, a question about the importance of agricultural development and whether that should be a priority. Um, uh, both for the economic development of the country and also to um, uh, uh, to provide less of an incentive for uh, for rebels and for bandits to uh, to operate as well. And uh, I wanted to hear more from from each of you about that. Um, maybe we'll start with um, uh, with our panelists here, and then we'll come back to you, Ambassador Zude. Um, okay. Ambassador Kralls, would you like to start? Very very. Um uh, to the point comment, and um, I should have mentioned that earlier, but agriculture, it, th there's an enormous potential for agriculture in that country. When you fly over the territory of the Central African Republic, well, it's green, apart from the northern part, but it's very green. There's a lot of water, small rivers and so on, and there's a lot of space. 
so agriculture is the future of, 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 of that country. But unfortunately, there are no large agricultural exploitations uh, like you can see them in other uh, uh, African countries. And I think, again, one of the reasons is, of course, the instability, but the other reason is the lack of infrastructure. Uh, you can grow crops, but if you can't export your, the product or if you can't bring it to other regions, of course, then there, there is, a, there is a, a marketing problem, if my, I may put it like that. But agriculture is very much part of the R of DDR. Um, we are working with FAO, uh, uh, the UN Agency for Agriculture and Food. Uh, uh, because there is also a problem of food security in the Central African Republic. So the R of DDR, it is mainly, uh, I'm not going to put a percentage on that, but is of course mainly agriculture. Uh, if you want to give these rebels a new future, I mean, it's in agriculture, uh, mainly that their future, uh, that their future uh, lies. Um, and I would like very much uh, to develop this idea of the importance of agriculture beyond the DDR uh, when it comes to development proper. Uh, uh, there again, I think agriculture will take a, a major place in, in the development and already takes a major place in the development uh, uh, strategy of the, the Central um, African uh, uh, Republic. So these are some comments I wanted to make just to make sure, I mean, of course, agriculture is, is in our programs. One word on these development hubs, which we didn't elaborate on, but this is another priority we have. What are development hubs? As I said, outside Bangui, everything needs to be rebuilt, reconstructed. We would like to start in a certain number of small towns to establish there a school, a small uh, uh, clinic or hospital, uh, build a kind of, uh, uh, of, 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 of tribunal and so on. Hoping that from these hubs, pôle de développement as we call it in French, uh, development will spread. And again, in this project of pôle de développement, agriculture is going to be uh, an important factor. And these are some comments I wanted to, to give, but Madame Zayde may uh, wish to come in on this too. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Kralls. Um, uh, Ambassador Zilde. Sorry. Thank you very much. I couldn't agree more. As I said in my uh, presentation, um, uh, I mean, the potential of this country is very high. And as Ambassador Graul said, for us coming from the continent, um, we would, in a positive way, of course, envy what the CAR has. I mean, a lot of land, fertile land, anything will grow, I, I'm sure, and water, most of all. Uh, that's very important. So I think that uh, um, the CAR, the future of the CAR will be in agriculture, in the private sector coming into agriculture. Um, the socioeconomic study that was undertaken among the, the, the combatants, these 8,000 that I have mentioned earlier, most of them would like to go to agriculture. Um, some of, in the northeast would have preferred maybe trade and, um, you know, um, min, mines and so on, but uh, I, it's, most, the bulk of it would go to agriculture. This is also a good potential that uh, one can, uh, can have. Again, the, in, uh, the African Union has a very good program in terms of agriculture, and we are helping um, the CAR to be into that and to benefit from, from that. But here again, there is a problem of capacity, starting from the Ministry of Agriculture and those who should be responsible for, for that. So we have to see it from the very beginning. And of course, the security issue uh, is there. Um, there is a need, uh, there is a small internal resources also for that, and uh, it, it's, there is an expectation generally for, uh, um, for external resources. But uh, as I said, it's, it's, uh, it's the future, it's very important, and um, 
and uh, we will uh, really uh, help them uh, in that regard. Uh, in, in, in Bangui, you would find fruits and vegetables imported from neighboring countries. This is just unacceptable, even for the daily uh, use. I mean, so uh, I think it's um, it's uh, the future lies in, in agriculture, and I cannot agree more uh, on, on that. And I think it's uh, the, the conditions are, are there for for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Zude. Ambassador yes, Wallers, would you like to to add? Um, well, I, I agree very much with what was said. Um, and obviously, as I was saying at the beginning, it's a very green country. Things do grow, um, which is a very important foundation for agriculture. Um, I'm also, of course, very mindful that this is going to be a complicated thing, that um, uh, there are people, for example, who have left the farms for insecurity reasons, or they went into diamonds, or they came to Bangui. Um, now the diamond industry has fallen through several several floors, and people might want to get back into agriculture. Or there are people who in Bangui who now, with the security, they might want to go back out. But how do you do that? Uh, if you don't if you don't have any any funds, how do you get back out and plant and then live until your your plans c come up? So these are these are actually rather complicated issues uh, where you need a very strong ministry agricultural extension service, for example, that doesn't currently I exist. And you know there is fortunately the World Bank is is putting some money into this. The EU, the Pôle de Développement, uh, which is of course the markets, which is another issue. So you know the good news is there is this important foundation of having land and water available doesn't make it simple. It's going to be uh, uh, some years of hard work. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman at the table here. My name is Bienvenue Tien from DRWDC. I want to thank the panel for such a great presentation. I feel like it's rather a comment or a question. So in at this, this defining moment where you try to unify all the forces of a country, so what I've been missing maybe in the presentation is the role of the diaspora. So is it any effort there to try to get the effort of the diaspora too? Thank you. Would anyone on the panel like to comment on this? Uh, Ambassador Zewde? Uh, well, definitely when uh, we know uh, uh, the contribution of the diaspora uh, to uh, the development of, of, of their country of origin or their country um, uh, in, in other African countries, we would say that it's very important to, to reach out to the, to the diaspora too. Uh, I know that the government is trying to do that and um, in, in, in those you know, um, with those uh, residing uh, especially in Europe, um, but uh, the, the impact is not really very visible um, in terms of uh, remittance or in terms of uh, really uh, having uh, investment in the country. And we have seen elsewhere how this has been very important. And I think it has to do with that, what has, uh, as I said earlier, the, um, that we have gone into two decades of kind of a disorder. So I think um, this climate that we are in, it looks, it looks like it's, we are in a transition period where things are settling down slowly but surely. Um, and um, as Ambassador Wallers has said, you know, Bangi life uh, has come back from some time. It's safe uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so are some cities in, in, in the interior. So I think that this will really help the diaspora to, to think. And they, they are the dual citizens also who are in numbers, if I uh, got it well. So um, this is, this is uh, something that uh, uh, would be important to look at for, for, for the near future. I think uh, what is being done now will give confidence for, for those to, to come. If it's uh, acceptable to the panelists, we'll, we'll take two more questions if they're brief. Uh, there, there's not much of a chance to talk about uh, 
uh, CAR, so I'd like to give us that, that chance, even if we, we run over a bit, if the, if the questions and the answers uh, can be brief. And we'll, we'll see if there's time for, for one more question as well. But the gentleman in the second row. Uh, Dave Peterson, National Endowment for Democracy. Just wondering if you could give us a little bit more of a sense of the political environment uh, currently in the country. Uh, in particular, uh, the um, uh, state of the independent media uh, and then uh, the state of uh, civil society. To what extent are there uh, organizations like the uh, League Centrafricaine de Droit de l'Homme that are uh, still um, uh, viable? And then finally, uh, what is the um, ability of uh, the political parties to uh, work freely? Um, how much political space is there for them uh, to uh, conduct an election campaign? Maybe what we'll do is we'll try to bundle questions so that we can, um, can, can answer them together and, and wrap up. And there is a question in the front row uh, here on the at the table. Yes, hello. Uh, my we, name can, we can't hear them. Ah, ah okay. Uh, you, you're not able to hear the microphone. Well, the, 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 the pardon me? Uh, the, the, the question from, uh, uh, that, that, that you just received was um, uh, about regional or the role of regional organizations and human rights organizations, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, um, independent press. Independent press. Civil society yes. And Okay. Okay. Uh, freedom. Uh, how, how much freedom independent organizations, civil society, as it were, including political parties, have, and um, and then uh, then we'll 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 have one more question, um, and we'll bundle the two together, um, uh, and wrap. The gentleman at the table here, sir. Okay. I am. Uh, Ambassador of Central African Republic here. And I uh, have uh, one question for Ambassador Grohls. Uh, two weeks ago, in New York, President Bozize uh, made uh, any proposition about uh, reinforcement of, of uh, operational capacity of our uh, security forces and uh, their financing by uh, international community. Thank you. So this will be our last question. And um, I would uh, open it maybe um, uh, to Ambassador Kralls to start. Um, yes, uh, the first question on civil society, press, and so on. Um, I, I think they have, um, in the Central African Republic, a, a vibrant civil, civil society. Uh, when I go there, I always meet, and uh, particularly the women's organizations are, are very active. But you feel that they're still weak. Uh, uh, but they have good ideas, and, and they deserve, I think, our support. Uh, we associate them uh, with our work. Uh, this is much appreciated, and I think it's important uh, in a peace-building effort that you not only talk to the government, of course, the, go the government is our main interlocutor, but that you talk also to, to others, and, 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 and civil society and women organizations are uh, um, uh, an important interlocutor. And I learned a lot from, from these women. Uh, talking about the way in which uh, the society is organized, their role, their place, and so on. Um, because so often in, in Africa, I mean, women have a very important place also economically, but they can't express it uh, in, the, in the formal structures uh, of the country. Uh, th 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 there is a, the press is, is free uh, in the Central African Republic. There's a lot of small uh, newspapers, particularly in Bangui, and I'm reading them. You can read them on, there on the web. And uh, so it's if you want to keep in touch with what's going on. Um, if I may say so, I think there's still scope for improving, uh, let me say, the quality, because uh, I sense that these uh, uh, newspapers are working with, with very small, small budgets and that the journalists are doing a lot on a, on a, on a, on a free basis. Uh, but it's good. It's free. There, there's, a, there's a free press, that, and, 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 and that is good. Um, I mean, this is a personal comment, perhaps sometimes a bit 
too many rumors and then rumors give rise to uh, certain truths and uh, but uh, the press in, in any case is free and, and that I think is, is important and that's not always the case uh, um, uh, in, 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 in these places um, on the political parties, perhaps I can ask Madame Zewde to, because she, she of course, is uh, on, on, on the ground. And, uh, of course, I, I, I have an idea of the political parties that uh, are now uh, part of the political spectrum and that are part of this political, inclusive political dialogue. They signed this, uh, this agreement uh, uh, end of, of uh, 2008, and, as was said, I mean, they made very good recommendations. There's still uh, a lot to be done in terms of implementing the recommendations. But in itself, they were so good that we incorporated these recommendations in our program of work of the Peace Building Commission. But I think uh, we, we, we need to give perhaps a, a new push together with our Central African friends so that these recommendations become, become a reality. Uh, there has there have been some uh, some delays on the ambassador's question of the operational capacity of the um, of the FACA the the, 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 the the Central African Army um, of course the, the the Central African Army needs to be strengthened in its operational capacity uh, it, it, it needs better funding and and the military and the police also need a better training and they deserve that and the Central Africans deserve to have a, a, a better paid and a better uh, uh, paid uh, army and, and, and police force. And that is what SSR is about, and that is one of the priorities we are, we are working on. Now, when it comes to the uh, withdrawal of Minurkat uh, by the end of the year, uh, this is now on the agenda of the Security Council. Uh, there was a debate uh, a, bit, uh, a month ago uh, in the Security Council on this, but I mean there were no conclusions were drawn. Last week, as I understand, but Madame Zewde can probably confirm this, there was a kind of uh, military uh, mission uh, of the UN uh, in, uh, in Bangui, and, and they traveled to the different uh, uh, areas, uh, and particularly the, north, the northeast of the country. I don't know what their conclusions are, but the Security Council will have to take a decision on that. But my answer to you, uh, Mr. Ambassador, is yes, uh, we need to do something about the armed forces of the Central African Republic. We know that this is very high on the agenda of your government. Uh, the same uh, goes for the, for the police force. Uh, and and, and I'm, I'm confident that the international community will come up uh, with, uh, with ideas. Madam Zude. Yes, uh, thank you very much. On, on, the, on the first question, very quickly, I also have the feeling that the civil society here is very vibrant, active, and um, really participate in the, in the life of, 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 of the nation. Uh, there are quite a number of, uh, of uh, um, local NGOs, um, uh, youth, women, and so on and so forth. We are helping them, uh, really, uh, in, in, in the limited uh, capacities of, of, of ours. Uh, and uh, I, I think they really uh, contribute uh, to, to, to the, to the uh, and participate in, 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 the, in the daily life of, of the country. Um, so um, uh, they have to be encouraged, they have to be helped, definitely. Um, as far as the press is concerned, the press also is very dynamic. There are um, a dozen of, of uh, newspapers every day, and um, you know um, we really need them with, with interest. And uh, they are, um, the press is free, as far uh, uh, as I can see it. They can say whatever they want, and, we, and um, uh, so uh, we, we haven't seen any problem here again. Of course, there is a, an issue of capacity where, where we will have uh, to help them, um, uh, uh, really. Uh, for the, as far as the political parties are concerned, again, uh, there are about 50 of them, um, but um, um, more in numbers than in, 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 in terms of, uh, of, of, of presence in the country and really being an effective political party. 
um, uh, I don't even know how many of them have a real program as far as political parties are concerned, but uh, the, those who are recognized are, are around uh, 50. So uh, I, I would say that um, they are playing their, uh, their, their role, and, uh, and um, this is how we see it from here, uh, with no major uh, problems. Now, uh, on the second point, um, as, uh, as it has been said earlier, um, um, the Secretary General has uh, proposed, uh, um, has made two proposals for Security Council. One has been, one has been retained, and that is uh, reinforcing the, the capacities of the FACAS, of the National Army. Uh, so this is uh, what has been um, decided and um, trying to see how uh, this can be done. We have um, given, I mean, um, uh, tried to help in assessing the need of, of the army, um, and um, that has been done. And uh, I know that uh, our Central African friends are, are trying to, to contact also to, to meet uh, bilateral partners in order to get in the regional uh, partners um, to, to, to get uh, any kind of uh, assistance uh, that might be possible. But the most important thing is that on the 20th of this month, the Security Council will meet on Minurkat and we will see uh, what uh, uh, the Council might uh, decide on, on that, on, on the way uh, forward, and what uh, will be also our role uh, as, as Binuka. Uh, but of course, the, the building the capacities of the security and armed forces is part of the SSR, mid and long term um, program of the SSR. That's why we're going to, to give um, special attention to, to that. It's very important. The, the, the government, the country needs it. The, 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 the level of uh, the FACA is very low and goes, no, doesn't go, uh, the, the, and the country is huge. Um, and to combat any threat, uh, who more than the national army can do the job? So I think it's very important to give them the capacity to do it, both in the southeast, in the northeast, and, and, and in that. So, uh, we will see um, what the, the Security Council will, uh, will decide, but of course um, uh, building their capacity is very uh, important. The country has been gone through a series of peacekeeping uh, um, uh, experiences. Um, the one of, that has been uh, um, uh, cited earlier, Mikopax, is, is here, and, um, and also um, contributing to the, of course, to the peace uh, building, and uh, I'm sure that uh, they will also have a role in this, um, in, in training and 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 helping the capacity of the FACAS. So this is what I could say. Of course, uh, there was a mission on the ground from DPKO um, um, last week. Um, they, I saw them during the weekend, but they are going to report to the Security Council. So. We will see what will come up from that. It's to assess the security situation in the northeast after the withdrawal of Minirkat. Thank you. Ambassador Zude, thank you very much. Ambassador Wallers, will you have a final word for us? Well, in that case, I would like to thank all of our panelists. Ambassador Zude um, from, uh, uh, from Bangui, um, Ambassador Wallers, and Ambassador Kral. Um, it's been a fascinating panel, uh, comprehensive information. Thank you very much on an issue that has not been discussed uh, uh, as, as much as it, as it should. So thank you for illuminating that for us. And thank you all for attending. Thank you.